Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Julio Navoa. I'm a cosmetic OBGYN living and practicing in El Paso, Texas. Today, I will be narrating a lecture presentation of the surgical technique called Temeset Anesthetic Breast Surgery, or TABS. TABS uses Temeset and lidocaine rather than traditional methods of anesthesia, such as IV sedation or general anesthesia. I have used this technique since 2008 in over 2,000 breast augmentations and considered to be the safest anesthetic option available for the vast majority of breast augmentation and swap out surgeries. Today's lecture is titled, Serial Tumescent Anesthetic Breast Surgery in an Underweight Female Patient. I hope you enjoy the presentation. The purpose of TABS is to provide a safer anesthetic option compared to IV or general anesthesia and to avoid the use of analgesics or anxiolytics preoperatively or interoperatively. TABS is based on the merging of two general concepts, the anesthetic component, which is based on the modifications of the Klein technique, and the surgical component, which is based on the modifications of the Gandhi awake breast augmentation technique. In general, TABS has similar risks and benefits as other tumescent surgeries, and compared to either IV or general anesthesia, TABS provides significant benefits with minimal risks. Tumescent anesthesia is based on a fundamental premise, which is, the decision for the type of anesthesia used for a surgical procedure should weigh the risks versus the benefits of performing the procedure using the anesthesia of choice of the surgeon versus the best choice for the patient. As such, tumescent anesthesia is far safer and should be an initial method of anesthesia offered for primary breast augmentation and swap out augmentation as compared to local, IV sedation, or general anesthesia. Office-based anesthesia in the state of Texas is regulated by the Texas Medical Board and categorized under Level 2, requiring a special permit and ACLS certification. Tumescent anesthesia should not be confused with local lidocaine. Tumescent anesthesia is based on the use of diluted lidocaine with epinephrine. As such, it does not have the same properties, effects, and risks as local lidocaine. The distinction between the physiological effects of local lidocaine and tumescent lidocaine are based on their formulation, dilution, and how the lidocaine is metabolized by the body over time. Tumescent lidocaine can be significantly safer to use than local lidocaine, allowing for up to 55 mg per kilogram body weight as compared to 7 with local lidocaine. Lidocaine toxicity is dose dependent in TABS, and as you approach 55 mg per kilogram body weight, up to 50% of patients may demonstrate transient postoperative symptoms. Based on over 2,000 surgeries, the Goldilocks concentration for use in TABS appears to be 35 mg per kilogram body weight. When calculating the amount of lidocaine to be used based on this Goldilocks value, multiply the weight of the patient by 35 mg per kilogram body weight. Although there are no absolute weight restrictions with TABS, I have found that optimal BMI falls within 18.5 and 29.9. The most common ingredients in tumescent anesthesia are lidocaine, epinephrine, sodium bicarbonate, and lactated ringers or normal saline. In general, two one-liter bags of tumescent solution are used in surgery, with 1,500 milligrams of lidocaine in the first bag and 500 milligrams of lidocaine in the second. The maximum amount of lidocaine used is dependent on body weight, and side effects are more common in patients whose body weight is below 40.9 kilograms. The contents of bag one are infiltrated along the mid-sternal line and equally within the left breast and the right breast. A similar volume is infiltrated into each breast from bag two. The second bag serves as both an anesthetic and additional hydroseparation of tissue and can be adjusted based on the BMI of the patient. The areas of infiltration are as followed. Area 1 is from the mid-sternal line from the xiphoid process up to the second rib. Area 2 is along the inframammary crease. Area 3 is from the junction of the perpendicular line from the inframammary crease and the lateral edge of the breast. Area 4 is from the anterior axillary line starting from the level of the inframammary crease up to area 5. The implant size is calculated by measuring the distance from the lateral sternal line to the anterior axillary line and is described as distance A. 
The maximum implant size is calculated by measuring the distance from the lateral sternal line to the mid-axillary line and is described as distance B. Due to the potential risk of pocket failure over time, dissection to the mid-axillary line is not recommended. Submuscular placement of an implant has several advantages over subglandular as far as the overall aesthetic appearance, the muscular support, and decreased risk of capsular contraction. Once the pockets have been created, an implant sizer can be placed in the pocket based on the centimeter size of distance A or B and multiplying that by 20 milliliters per centimeter. Once the sizers are in place, the fully conscious patient is seated and allowed to view her breast in the mirror in both a frontal and profile view. Total time for surgery skin to skin is approximately 55 minutes. The post-op management is similar to general anesthesia and the anesthetic effect lasts for up to two hours following surgery. Unlike IV sedation and general anesthesia, the patient is completely coherent and fully conscious throughout her surgery and she can be discharged home after 30 minutes of post-op observation. One of the best uses of tabs is the swap out, which is very effective for the removal, exchange, and replacement of implants. Surgery begins with infiltration of area 1, the mid-sternal line, from the xiphoid process to the second rib, moving on to area 2 of each breast along the inframammary crease up to the nipple areolar complex, then area 3, 4, and 5, infiltrating to mesitlaticane in the space created between the pectoralis muscles and the intercostals on each side. The initial incision is made in the inframammary crease. Sharp and blunt dissection allows for the undermining and lifting of the pectoralis muscle and creation of the submuscular implant pocket. The implant sizer is then inserted. The sizer is then inflated to the desired size. The same procedure is done on the opposite side. The patient is allowed to see the tentative size of augmentation from a seated position and then she decides her final size. The patient is placed back in the supine position and her sizers are removed. The implant pockets are then washed out with antibiotic solution. The incisions are prepped for closure in multiple layers using absorbable sutures. TSRX textured implants are then inserted using a funnel and the incisions closed. During her first surgery, the patient opted for a 285 gram textured implant, increasing her bra size from a 32A to a 32B. Surgery begins with infiltration of area 1, which is the mid-sternal line, followed by infiltration of areas 2 through 5 to include the previous scar. 
The scar itself is then removed. Sharp dissection continues to the implant pocket. Adhesions formed by the textured implants are blunt dissected and the implants are removed. An infiltration cannula is then used in the pocket and the incision is clamped. Tumescent lidocaine is then used to fill the pocket. The same steps are done on the opposite side. The implant is removed. Tumescent solution fills the second breast and the first breast is allowed to drain. An implant sizer is inserted and the pocket boundaries are determined. A larger sizer is exchanged based on the estimated pocket capacity and inflated. The pocket is then irrigated and the supporting sutures are then placed. Based on the capacity of the implant sizers, style 45-600cc implants are chosen and then inserted. The incisions are then closed using absorbable suture. During her second surgery, the patient opted to change from a 285 gram textured implant to a 600 cc style 45, increasing her bra size from a 32B to a 32 triple D. For interoperative comparison, one breast is done at a time. Surgery begins with the infiltration of area one, the midsternal line. Infiltration continues from areas 1 through 5. Area 2 is infiltrated up to the nipple areolar complex and the scar is removed. Sharp dissection continues to the implant pocket. The implant is then removed. An implant sizer is placed in the pocket and inflated to determine the pocket boundaries. A relaxation of the pocket beyond the anterior axillary line is found. The patient is seated and allowed to view her tentative breast size as compared to her current style 45 implant on the opposite side. And the recommended capsulopography is explained. The patient is returned to supine. The pocket is prepped and irrigated and a capsulopography is performed by placing sutures within the lateral pocket border medial to the anterior axillary line. The implant sizer is replaced to determine the new lateral border of the pocket. The underlying layers of tissues are reinforced and the new implant is placed and the incision closed. The same procedure is repeated on the opposite side beginning with infiltration of areas 1 through 5. The scar is removed. 
sharp dissection is performed to the implant pocket. The implant is then removed. The pocket is irrigated and incisional sutures are placed to assist in closing. The new implant is placed and the incision is closed. During her third breast augmentation surgery, the patient opted to go from a style 45-600cc to a style SRX-700cc, increasing her bra size from a 32 triple D to a 32 quadruple D. In conclusion, TABS is a very safe and effective procedure. It is safer as compared to IV and general anesthesia, informed consent is maintained throughout the surgery, and it is exceptionally good for simple removal, replacement, or swap out of implants. The following online references are provided, including the peer-reviewed journal article from the American Journal of Cosmetic Surgery, September 2012, Temesith Anesthetic Breast Surgery, TABS, a consecutive case series review of primary and secondary breast augmentation surgery in an office-based surgical center. This concludes my presentation on TABS. I hope that you have found it to be informative. Thank you very much for watching.